Mike Tirico is here from NBC Sports. Are they going to get through this? I don't know if they get all the way through it, Chip. My, my gut, my guess, and, and who knows what's going to happen, right? I, I think most of the schools will play a good number of the games on their schedule. I, I think there will be some games that will not get played. Uh, we're seeing that now with games postponed. We're going to run out of time to reschedule games towards the end of a college football playoff. You know, we do the Notre Dame games on NBC, and I, we do the home games. They went through a stretch they couldn't play a couple of weeks ago. Today they announced they had nobody in quarantine, nobody who's tested positive. Mm -hmm. So teams are coming through this stuff, but it's not a guarantee by any stretch that you're going to be able to ring the bell every Saturday. I, but what you want to do is get through it, get to the conference championship, try to get to a national championship so that the money flows and the programs continue. That, that looks more promising. Well, that's the business part of it, and you and I were talking about that uh, this morning on the phone. There's a reality here that, uh, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are jumping back in. Big Ten next week, Pac-12 a couple weeks after that, in large part because the train was going down the track with the ACC, the Big 12, and the SEC. They were playing ball. There was going to be a college football playoff. If the other two conferences didn't jump in, that money wouldn't be there. If you don't get to the end, there's not the money that the playoff provides. So for these schools, and Chef, this is where I think the big deal is, those programs fund all the other programs. Yeah. Football and basketball fund oh so many sports if they don't play and get all that money, there's going to be problems with scholarships and those sports down the line. I was reading up today on it. At LSU, without the football revenue, they're $44 million in the hole. In Tuscaloosa, as a community, it's a $200 million impact on the community. These towns can't last long without the crowds, not like they are now. You hit the real impact. You know, the players are going to get another year of eligibility after this year. It almost doesn't count for them. They'll get their chances to play. The communities concern me so much, Shep. Uh, I live in the Midwest. I live in Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah. Big Ten country. You know, the businesses, the restaurants, the hotels, they book on those six or seven Saturdays. If they don't have these weekends for the whole year, which most of them won't, it's a devastating blow. Co economy's going to hurt. Companies aren't going to come back and be able to open the doors again. You know, one of the things about this is when two teams play, <laughs> there ain't no bubble. I mean, look at these yeah. stills from the NFL. This is from really cold weather, so you get kind of an idea about what happens with their breath. I mean, that's in Kansas City in the middle of the winter. Breaths come out. I mean, think about Lambeau in the snow in the worst games. and It's like horses. and It's all intermingled. You know, this is tough. Yep, that was the biggest concern that I had going into the season. And this is a pretty interesting piece of factual data that's happened. Tennessee Titans in the NFL lost several players. They had to postpone a game. Their schedule's been all messed up. They had players who were asymptomatic but played against the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. Not one Minnesota Viking came down with COVID-19 after playing the Tennessee Titans. Same thing when Notre Dame played South Florida. South yeah. Florida postponed their next game. Nobody tested positive. The outside part of this is one thing that they're looking at very closely, and so far the answers there have been the games may not be where the problems are. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.